Hello everyone, Animanian here. What would you say if I were to tell you that this obscure mobile game, Heroes 2 The Undead King, is like Dark Souls? But really, consider that for a second. Let it sink in. This mobile game, and know that I don't say this lightly, in general, I hate mobile games, is like this AAA game title. And this mobile game is cheap, like dirt cheap, $1.49 on the App Store, and for the frantic, tension-filled hours of gameplay, well worth it in my books. Now, I'm not trying to say that these games are the same. In fact, the thing is, they're about as dichotomous as polar opposites can get. But that's the point. The fact that two games separated by genre, themes, graphics, console, and market could share similar mechanics to engage the player is amazing. It is what makes gaming as an art form so beautiful. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's take a look at this mobile game first, and then we'll analyze both games together. Part 1. The Art Style To start off with, Heroes 2 The Undead King has a very nice hand-drawn aesthetic, as if someone lovingly painted each environment. The world feels lived in because of the myriad of diverse colours, but also the variation in the trees, the rocks, the castle walls, and the landmarks to really bring the game to life. And if you take a deeper look, you'll see that a lot of assets I just repeated and it is through careful placement that environments can feel novel and unique. Overall, the art style feels really clean and pleasant to the eye. I mean, just look at the detail in these sprites. Kudos to you, game dev team. I think the designers behind this game really leveraged everything they could to make this game feel polished. Because I know that they probably didn't have anywhere near triple A game budgets, so there's not a billion features or 100 customizable outfits, but what they do have just feels nailed down. What people don't realize is that you don't need to have everything to make a perfect game, movie or artwork. What I personally believe is you only need one or two of those things and to perfect those. In Heroes 2 The Undead King, this is the combat system and artwork which feel well oiled and smoothly enjoyable to play. The story is simple, you're a brave hero against a malevolent evil coming to destroy the kingdom. Find the magical artifact to stop the evil. Simple, generic, which is what I love about it. It is literally delivered to you in three paragraphs the second you start the game. It's straightforward and lets us get straight into the action. Which is a nice segue, because this game is all about the action. Part 2. The Combat System You see, this game is deceptively simple. From the cartoonish art style, which feels lighthearted and relaxed, to the fantasy-like premise. But don't let that deceive you, because the combat system, the combat system is really the essential focus. One thing you need to understand first is you'll notice that there are numbers below each soldier. That is how many of each soldier type you have. So we have an initial unit with base stats and we multiply that by however many units we have. This means the more soldiers you have, the more damage output and defense against enemy units you have. But really, what is the defining feature of this game? And what I'd reply with is speed. Speed is the name of the game, because you see, let's say both the enemy and I have 40 knights. Do you think we're evenly matched? Well, the answer is no, because it depends upon who moves first. Because if I hit the enemy, for enemy knight first and reduce them to 36 knights, their damage output is suddenly decreased. So they could only reduce me to 37 knights, in which case I would hit back again and reduce them to 30 knights, which means that when they hit me, I only get reduced to 35 knights. You can see where this is going. Whoever hits first wins. This might seem inconsequential, but this one clever design tactic inf incentivizes the player to be hyper-aggressive 
Why? Because it means that you always want to hit first and deal the most damage as fast as possible, so your enemy can't do as much damage to you. And I feel as if this, this entire game was built around this foundation of speed, with mechanics such as different soldiers being able to move different amounts of squares, morale and spells, all helping to emphasize this notion of speed. From this, I believe there is a lot of thinking from the player's side, and fun to be had, to learn and be able to position soldiers to avoid attacks and exploit the game's mechanics to make full use of movement to win games. One more thing, a little bit about the game and how it is set up. You start off in Heroes 2 The Undead King by spawning on an island, and when you lose or surrender, you will respawn back here. The entire world is composed of a series of other islands populated with hostile bandits on land and pirates at sea. This game is also programmed so that islands closer to you have less difficult enemies, and as they get further away from you, the enemies get more difficult. Now, to buy troops for your army to attack enemies, you just need to find a tavern, a camp, or a tree house, and you can buy troops from there. A clever thing that the game does is that enemies who have more troops than you will move towards you and initiate battle. So you cannot immediately jump to the strongest island and buy yourself the strongest soldiers. Still, hold on to this idea as we'll be revisiting this a little later. Okay, now that's all I want to discuss about Heroes 2 The Undead King itself. I had some content on how this game defines health and the 7 day system, but I deemed it irrelevant and boring, so I cut it. So without further ado, let us compare Dark Souls and Heroes 2 The Undead King. It goes without saying that both games are extremely difficult and have very steep learning curves, but I want to dig a little deeper. Why are they so difficult? Well, first of all, because every enemy is like you. What do I mean? Unlike in other games, in Dark Souls, you aren't special. You have no more health than any other enemy. In fact, most of the time, you have less health. You deal less damage, you are outnumbered, outgunned, and outsworded. And you take about the same amount of damage as every other enemy before dying. You are not Rambo, and everyone else doesn't die in one hit. You have to play tactically to outsmart them, because you are just as strong as your enemies. In fact, a lot of your foes are bigger and stronger than you. This design really fits with the game's themes, because the story of all three Dark Souls games revolves around the notion that no matter what you do, nothing changes. You are, as a chosen undead, inconsequential. Whether you light the fire or not, the cycle will continue. You have no effect on this world, and in the same way, when you are among giants who are bigger than you, deal many times more damage than you, you feel small and meaningless. This theme is also carried into Heroes to the Undead King, because in every fight, your enemy can have just as many soldiers as you do, or even more and it is up to you to play tactically to manage your resources, to buy soldiers while trying not to go bankrupt from the costs of maintaining your army, to make use of space, to pick your fights carefully, because every enemy has a chance of killing you. In this case, it lends itself to the game's environment, making it seem harsh and uninhabitable. It helps add a sense of realism, and it just makes your victories all the sweeter when you do accomplish them. What else do I mean when I say that both games are difficult? Well, because they punish you with lasting consequences when you die, which is not something that games often do. Most games punish you in some form when you make a mistake by sending you back a little bit, or even helping you skip past the obstacle in your way stopping you from moving on. Not Dark Souls. 
If you die twice in a row, you lose all your souls. Not to mention, in Dark Souls 2 and 3, your maximum HP gets reduced. So besides not even helping you when you make a mistake, the game forces you to come to terms with the consequences of your actions, which seems counterintuitive at first. Because if you just failed, the obvious answer for a game developer would be to console you and encourage you to get back into the thick of it. But personally, I think this tough love mentality lends a greater gravity to each encounter. It makes each fight, even with the least interesting enemies, important and ramps up the tension because the consequences, unlike in other games, are palpable. This can also be seen in Heroes 2 The Undead King because your soldiers do not respawn when they die. It is permanent. And if you encounter a battle you are not prepared to take, you will lose the vast majority of your soldiers forever. This creates an environment in which each battle makes your heart race because each of your soldiers matter, from the peasants to the druids. In both games, because your actions have such an influence on things that you earned and feel a personal connection to, such as souls and gold, by grinding, by hard effort, you are motivated to play tactically and invest yourself more deeply into the games, meaning that you receive greater entertainment as a result. Another thing I think both games share is the benefit of choice. What do I mean by this? Well, both games let you take the high road and cruise through the game with relative ease. In Dark Souls 1, this is following the linear story path, killing all the required bosses, ergo gaining necessary souls to level up your character and progress, so that the enemies are roughly aligned to your level. But what you can also do in Dark Souls 1 is just skip through the game, because a lot of the bosses are optional and there are many shortcuts throughout. So if you really wanted to finish this game faster, albeit with, greater, with much greater challenge, you could certainly skip some of the areas entirely. A good example of this is at the start of the game, at Fri Firelink Shrine, when you have to ring two bells. You can take the easy path to the undead church first, which is recommended as the enemies are much easier. Or you can take the hard path down to Quelag's domain first by passing through the Valley of Drakes and Blighttown, which is significantly harder to get to. And what this does is it empowers the player and allows you to do what you want while feeling exhilarating at the same time. The fact that you can partially choose how your soldier goes through the game is amazing. It is the same thing with the Heroes to the Undead King. You can just play it safe and beat everybody on your island, gaining experience before moving onto the next island and slowly slugging it through. But remember how I said you cannot immediately jump to the strongest island and buy yourself the strongest soldiers? Well, that was false. Because through very careful maneuvering, you can in fact sneak past bandits and pirates of much higher level to hire soldiers of much higher quality sooner. Repeating this process of slowly sneaking behind enemy lines, hoping for a paladin or two or three or a druid or a bunch of elves is exciting. It is exciting because it is also high risk as if you aren't careful, bandits will move towards you and initiate battles which you cannot win at all, meaning you will sacrifice an entire week in game and your money or your entire army. In the same way, playing Dark Souls by taking shortcuts is very difficult, as in most cases you will die with one hit. However, it can also be its own reward by finishing the game faster and feeling awesome because you did something much earlier than any developer intended you to. These two games both allow the player to choose to take challenge, to speed through the game, presenting with greater difficulty and greater risk reward for those that wish to be challenged while also allowing for a more leveled path. 
But when I talk about choice in Heroes 2, I also mean Zugzwei. It's a real word, I promise. It's a term that I learned from my fifth grade chess teacher. So thank you very much, my fifth grade chess teacher. It, it's, it's a German term in chess and is a position when every move you make is a bad one. And Heroes 2, the Undead King, confronts you with a lot of situations where you have to lose a soldier or must make an unfavorable move. And this makes for some really interesting scenarios where you must choose the lesser of the evils. The point is that with Heroes 2, the Undead King, it is always going to be painful. You are always going to lose health, soldiers, spells, and gold. But you must choose the better of the outcomes. And that is what I like. Because there is no evident right answer. It is up to you to solve these problems and choose. And in moments like these, this is where the game shines the brightest, as it can convey the anxiety of maintaining an army and fighting battles where the fate of victory or defeat hangs in the balance. Now the final thing that I think both games share is mastery. Mastery in the sense that in combat there is so much to learn and master. In Dark Souls you have iframes in your role, learning the rhythm, combos and movesets of your favorite weapons, mastering parrying, memorizing scripted enemy attack patterns, and once you learn these, you realize there is so much room for improvement from when you first started. There are ways to exploit the AI so that you can improve your ability to fight them immensely. I mean, just look at how the pros do it. They sweep effortlessly through hordes of foes and eldritch entities. The achievement that comes from when you first saw a Hollow Knight which proceeded to butcher you with the simplest of attack patterns to combating a towering demon with a complex variety of attacks. In tandem with an onslaught of other enemies is epic. Heroes 2 The Undead King also applies this concept. The fact that you can go from an encounter where you lose all your soldiers to an encounter in which you destroy the enemy without even being touched through simple positioning is freeing because you have ultimate control over all the elements in the game and whether they end up in disaster or victory. This is also helped by the fact that you can double tap the home button and shut down the app to restart the battle from the beginning, which is slightly cheap I would admit, I will admit, but this unintended consequence allows for careful rep repetition of each battle until you are completely sure you made full use of every soldier. Although at times frustrating as it is, it is all worth it for that perfect encounter where you are left completely untouched of that encounter which you thought was completely impossible because you are faced with an overwhelming throng of enemies, but with careful position with the careful position of positioning and spells, you just perfectly executed those who were much stronger than you. And that is why this really obscure mobile game, which I don't think has seen too much attention, is like this AAA game series, Dark Souls. Now, I don't want to make Heroes 2 seem perfect, because I wish that the controls were explained a little more, like pressing and holding to use the telescope to scope out locations and enemies, which is a crucial feature that is never taught. But in the same way, there is a certain allure to how the game teaches you so little and expects you to figure it out for yourself, which I do appreciate. And sometimes I felt that getting forced into some battles felt cheap, as double tapping can to move can be finicky, but these are really just small complaints, and I fully congratulate game dev team for creating such an excellent mobile game. Now to end off this review, I just want to say I haven't actually played Dark Souls. Okay, I lied. I have on the Xbox 360, but only as far as conquering the Asylum Demon, ending up at Firelink Shrine, battling my way up Undead Burg, obtaining the Drake Sword, and getting scorched by the dragon. 
newbie stuff. Yeah. I have, however, watched my older brother play through the entirety of Dark Souls 1 about two and a bit times and play through Dark Souls 2 once. And on YouTube, that's another story entirely. Because I've watched something like four hours of gameplay, lore summaries of all three games, a game maker's toolkit, writing on games, Sid Course, the Gaming Brit Show, all four of which have remarkable perspectives on the Dark Souls series. So check them out, please. Description below. Thank you very much for to everyone for being here. And I'd say that this is the most difficult script I've written to date, just because of the complexity of both these games and trying to make a video which is both entertaining and informative. I've been brutal with my script, to be honest, cutting out huge portions which I thought were just boring I didn't add anything unique to this. So it's been a journey for me. Also because I recorded this gameplay on my iPad Pro with a massive screen, so the aspect ratio is off, which isn't the best because I've actually recorded this all at higher than 1080p and forced to scale it down. But in spite of that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for being here. Anime Nyan out. <laughs>